Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about accelerometer. Now we have already discussed about vibrometers which require large masses and are quite bulky which makes them difficult to carry from one place to another. So accelerometers, they are much better instruments in comparison to vibrometers. Reason being accelerometers, they can measure acceleration. Plus they can also display uh, displacement and velocity. And they are majorly used for vibration measurements in order to record earthquakes. So we have already discussed that in case of seismic instruments to measure the vibration, the system is made by three components, the mass, spring and a damper which are enclosed in a cage and this cage is placed on the surface of the body which is vibrating so this the y is denoting the vibration of the base and the vibration of mass because this body is placed on a vibrating medium so mass is displaced uh, its displacement is denoted by let's say x Therefore, the relative displacement of the body is denoted by z is equal to x minus y. So, this is the equation that we have already deduced and we say that the motion of the vibration or we say the vibration of the base is basically a harmonic motion. So, this is the equation that we got and we got calculated the steady state solution of this equation and we got the equation as this equation where r is omega upon omega n where omega n is the natural frequency of vibration and zeta is the damping factor so the first case that we discussed was for vibrometers where we said that z upon y was equal to 1 that means the relative velocity or the relative displacement was of the whole system was equal to the displacement of the base of the vibrating body on which this cage is being placed the second case we are discussing is when r is very less or when r is less than one so if r is less than one you see this factor the denominator it actually becomes very less right because when r is less than one and we are squaring it so what is happening the denominator is becoming very less so we can say that almost z is almost equal to r square into y and what is r it is omega square upon omega n that means for r to be small omega n has to be large right and omega n is what it is under root s under root k upon m where k is the spring coefficient and m is the mass of the body being used so to make omega n large mass of the body has to be small and the spring it needs to have the large value of the spring coefficient that means the short spring is used so automatically the size of the system it is reduced which is just opposite the case of the vibrometers where omega n was supposed to be very small therefore the mass was very large whereas in case of accelerometers omega n has to be large because the value of r has to be very small so the mass is small the spring is also small because we want the spring of high stiffness therefore the system becomes less bulky and compact so if we plot a graph between r which is omega upon omega n keeping it on x axis and z upon y on y axis we see that the range of accelerometer we know r should be less than 1 or somewhat equal to 1 so this is the range of the accelerometer and we see that what is z z is y into omega upon omega n or y into r because we are saying that r is very less so the denominator it becomes you know it's a very small quantity so we also see that the ratio of z upon y it is almost equal to omega upon omega n so we see the ratio for this omega upon omega n value z upon y is almost similar to that of omega upon omega n and this is the case for all the damping coefficients we see the damping coefficient from 0 to 1 the case remains the same that z upon y is equal to omega upon omega n 
and the range of accelerometer for its operating conditions is when r is uh, less than 1. So, we have already discussed that because the accelerometers they require very small size of the mass and a small spring. So, its size is small. So, it's quite a compact uh, unit. It's highly sensitive and it can also measure displacement velocity and acceleration. If we plot a graph, so we plot a graph between r and this denominator. If you remember the equation where z was is equal, equal to y upon r and this denominator, right? So we say that when r is very small, this also should be equal to or somewhat near about equal to 1. So we see in this graph that when the value of this denominator is equal to 1, the value of r which is omega upon omega n, it lies between 0, uh, near about 0 to 0 0.6 and when this, because this cannot be equal to 1, this is almost equivalent to 1. So when the range lies somewhere near about 0.96 to 1.04, so r lies between 0 to 0.6 and we also see that the damping factor right that damping factor also lies between 0.65 this we can see 0.65 to 0.7 for this range we are talking about this range 0 0.96 to 1.02 so this is the damping factor and the value of r it lies somewhere near about this value 6 right so this is so from this graph we can understand or we can see that how the values of uh, r change for different values of the damping factors considering that this value is almost equal to 1 because it is almost equal to 1. So we can take like uh, plus minus 0.2 or 0.4 for consideration.